The season is now well over for Nebraska, which means a couple seniors are going to have to make a choice between entering the NFL draft and coming back for another year of eligibility to play for Matt Rule in Nebraska. But in this video, we're going to talk about the some players who did decide to enter the draft and try their luck in the professionals. So we'll go over their impact and how this is going to impact Nebraska going into 2024. Uh, before we get into the video, please hit the subscribe button on this channel. We're producing content left and right in the month of December. Uh, film breakdowns. Uh, I mean, come on. Who else is doing film dri- breakdowns in Nebraska YouTube? Nobody. So uh, definitely hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on that. We have a new one dropping tomorrow. So without further ado, let's get into the video, everybody. So a couple players decided to enter the NFL draft over the last couple weeks. Uh, most notably... Marcus Washington. So let's start off with Marcus Washington. This is a guy who has been here for the last two years after transferring in from Texas, was originally a four-star recruit coming out of high school. Uh, And in his two years, he had 630 yards for 40 catches and a touchdown. Um, A guy who honestly was widely underrated and underused in his career as a Cornhusker. This is a guy that I consider one of the better wide receivers we've had in the last decade. Um, And I I don't don't really feel like I'm, um, you know, overrating him when I say that. This is a guy who I thought outplayed Trey Palmer in some games last year. Uh, Trey Palmer was a very off and on guy. Sometimes he'd go off for 150 and you know two touchdowns. There'd be some games where he was held without a catch or with only one or two catches. And Marcus Washington would basically pick up the rest of the production. So I felt like Marcus Washington was really just kind of that ideal number two wide receiver in an offense. Um, unfortunately, he got banged up this year pretty early on and didn't finish the year. Um, but this is a guy who I, I, I think honestly would be huge if he were to come back for another year. He was originally trying to come back on a waiver. It was a very complicated situation with his injury waiver and basically decided, hey, I'm not going to I'm not gonna risk it. I'm just going to enter the NFL draft and try my luck in the professionals. Um, so, yeah, I, I think this is a big loss. We're talking about a wide receiver room, which um, we've discussed extensively within the last couple of weeks. It's not very good. Um, your best returning wide receiver as of right now is Jalen Lloyd. And this is a guy who has played track his entire career. That's has been his main sport. He really hasn't played football um, until basically later in his high school days. And that's not a dig at Jalen Lloyd, very talented player, very, um, you know, good future for Nebraska, but that basically gives you an example how, of how desperate we are in that room. Um, I mean, I guess your second best receiver would be Malachi Coleman. Again, a very talented receiver, but not a guy with much production. So, um, Definitely, definitely need to get a transfer in that room. We already tried to go after Julian Fleming. That didn't really work out. Now we're going after Jamal Banks. Hopefully we can end up with his talents. Again, if you haven't seen that video I made about him, definitely hit the link in the description if you want to basically get a rundown on him. He'd be a huge transfer addition. So that's the first one, Marcus Washington. We'll make a video in the spring talking about where I think all these guys will go in the draft. I expect him to go undrafted. I mean, this is a dude who really um, hasn't produced at the way that NFL scouts are looking for. Um, They're very particular about their wide receivers in the draft process. And, you know, he doesn't have more than 1,000 yards uh, in any of his career. He doesn't have over 1,000 yards in the last two years, right? So a guy who I think is going to get an opportunity as an undrafted free agent, but I doubt doubt he'll get drafted. So uh, we'll make a video about in the spring talking about that a little bit more, though. Um, so he was basically the only one who had a choice whether to come back or not. Um, a couple of others did not have a choice starting off with Anthony Grant. Um, I was a lot lower on Anthony Grant than most people. Anthony Grant ran for 1300 yards, uh, nine touchdowns within his two careers as a corn Husker averaged four yards a carry. Um, Anthony Grant had probably one of the bigger regressions we've ever seen from a Husker running back. He, the first second he got on campus, he was rushing for hundred yards a game, looked really, really good. And then when we started playing these, you know, big body, big 10 defenses, his production dipped and he got, he lost his confidence. He uh, got questionable with himself, right? He was, um, you know, one of my biggest critiques about Anthony Grant was that he was too comfortable in the pocket. He was trying to dance around, find a hole. You know, when you're a big 10 play, you cannot wait forever to find a hole. You got to boom. First one you see, bang, go, go across. He was getting too dancey. You know, you are a power running back. You're not going to beat anybody with your athletic ability. You're not going to beat anybody with your speed. You're going to beat people by putting your head down and see if you can make a move, right? Um, So I really thought that Anthony Grant struggled in that department. He was also not great in pass pro. So I was a lot lower on Anthony Grant than most people. That being said, I think the running back room is absolutely hurt by him leaving. We're talking about our again our best running returning running back being Gabe Irvin. Not awesome, right? Going into his fourth year off of uh, two season-ending injuries. Uh, maybe Ramir Johnson be your better back. I mean, it's a bad room, but 
when we consider that bad room, Anthony Grant still didn't make a very big presence in there last year. He was also dealing with suspension. So, uh, again, not to not to dig on Anthony Grant, right? Um, but not a guy who I think Nebraska is really going to miss too much um, in the 2024. A couple other guys who are leaving. Billy Kemp will enter his name in the NFL draft. A guy who, let's just call it what it is, was a transfer bust, right? Um, came in from Virginia, had a pretty solid career as a Cavalier, and then uh, was coming off a big injury and didn't do much in Lincoln as our uh, basically wide receiver one all off season long. Missed a couple, missed a little bit of time due to injury here and there, but yeah, just really, really did not move the needle as a wide receiver here. Omar Brown's another guy who entered the NFL draft didn't have a choice to come back or not. Um, that's a loss. That's a loss for the secondary. This dude was a stud this year. This secondary was a lot better, and it was thanks to his help. A uh, guy who came in from Northern Iowa. They didn't really do much the first two years he was on campus, but really turned it up last, uh, this year. Uh, had, a, had a really nice year for himself. And the last one, Quinton Newsom. Th- this one hurts This one hurts the most. Quinton Newsom enters the NFL draft. He didn't have a choice. This was his last year of eligibility. Um, I believe Quinton Newsom will be the only Cornhusker to get drafted in this NFL draft, um, barring anything crazy, maybe like an injury um, when he's training. But Quinton Newsom is a guy who honestly – I would even say underperformed given the amount of potential that he has and the uh, level of athleticism that he has. He is a really, really high ceiling. Um, We know that he came from basically a stacked secondary unit um, under Travis Fisher. Shout out to Travis Fisher, by the way, uh, in the Scott Frost regime. We saw him produce NFLers left and right, left and right, and Quinn Newsom will be the last one of his guys to uh, end up going to the NFL draft and getting drafted. So shout out to Travis Fisher there. But Quinn Newsom, I, I expect him to go around the fifth round. That is a loss for Nebraska. Um, so those are basically the notable guys. I, I'm sure I'm missing one or two that are entering the NFL draft. Um, we did have an announcement that a couple are coming back. Bryce Benhart, who, you know, I know a lot of people love to uh, diss on Bryce Benhart. Again, I haven't been a great fan of his play the last couple years. He played a lot better last year. Um, still, you know, not at the level it needs to be can, when we consider other tackles in the Big Ten, uh, but he played a lot better. So that hopefully he continues to progress when he comes back. And then we saw Isaac Gifford return. Isaac Gifford um, a guy I wasn't too high on in the secondary. I thought um, specifically he the Wisconsin game um, was one of his worst performances all year long. Um, there's a couple others where I thought Isaac Gifford just kind of was a liability in the secondary. But, again, we're talking about another dude who has gotten better throughout his career, and hopefully he makes another big step. Uh, we know he has the um, ability to. So um, that's the guys coming back. Um, and of course we know some guys are entering the portal as well. We already made videos about that, but, uh, that'll be the video. Everybody, let me know what you think about these guys entering the draft, um, or coming back. If this is a big deal, not a big deal. I'll say this real quick. We were five and seven last year. We were four and eight the year before we were three and nine the year before. None of these guys, even Quentin Newsom, who I think is a stud are deal breakers. Okay. We are not going to miss any single one of these guys because, they're, they're just not game they're not game wreckers. They're not guys who really contributed to winning football. And at the end of the day, when we consider the other talent the other teams have, I don't know if a lot of these guys would have started on their teams. So I know a lot of people love to say, well, he was the best that we had, but what we had wasn't good, you know. Um, it, it's just a lot a lot of you know, a lot of people like to do that where they make these players seem a lot more important than they actually are like Trust me, guys. These guys are studs. I'm rooting for them in the NFL, but we're not going to miss a single one of them. Uh, we're trying to produce, you know, a lot, you know, some better players over the course of their career. But again, shout out to everybody entering the NFL draft. Um, they tried the hardest in Nebraska Cornhusker. Uh, again, it wasn't enough, but we're hoping that uh, in the future years we'll have some more guys uh, that'll follow them uh, into the league. So again, that'll be the video here on Will Stimmons Sports. Again, please hit the subscribe button. We got so much content planned. I mean, it's ridiculous. You don't want to miss any of it. Um, here on Husker YouTube. But as always, go Matt Rule, go Big Red. See you next one, everybody.